Elion. You dream of a great city. It stands between a range of hills and a basin of aspens. You walk through this city's streets, noticing fruit trees on all sides of you, gardens of moss and herbs and fruits hanging in mats and from vines growing down from the walls of the buildings. And you feel this strange manipulation of scale as you continue to walk through the city. You feel tiny as you notice outside the city walls these blades of grass the size of enormous tree trunks blocking the sunlight briefly as they cross between you and Hot's brilliance. And you enter a building, a great temple library. It's full to the brim with holy texts and lit by magical lanterns floating above desks, with your fellow holy men reading and debating theology in hushed voices. The stairs go down into the depths of the earth, and you enter this maze of tunnels filled with books. The walls smell pleasant, but musty, and the light dims further and further, and you find yourself relying on the smell. You want nothing more than to find a particular book, and as you're hunting for it, you find it difficult to remember the title of the text. This bothers you immensely. Finally, in a bolt of recollection, it comes to you. But in that instant, a shadowy figure steps out of the darkness, puts their hand over your mouth, and slits your throat. You wake up, sweating. Cruel. You dream of a garden of white lilies. They glow in the moonlight. Even, it seems, when the moon goes behind a cloud, you feel that this should be a holy space, but something's wrong. As you feel this corrupting presence, you locate a shadowy figure hunched over a patch of lilies, collecting pollen. They then enter a little hut, lit by a pleasant flicker from inside, and you hover at the door, wondering whether to knock, as a quiet grinding sound begins from the kitchen window. Hanging on the doorknob, you notice a familiar-looking necklace. Irsu. It's difficult to tell if you're dreaming at all. For the longest time, it feels more like you're drifting between that kind of wakefulness when no time seems to pass, and that kind of half-sleep when you blink, and it's suddenly further along in the night. You finally get up from your bedroll, not knowing whether you're dreaming, and you feel this strange pull toward the great eagle tree down the clearing. It's irresistible. You don't know whether you're even walking toward it or floating. You find yourself closer than you've ever been yet to this monster of a tree, close enough to touch its bark, and once again you marvel at how wide its trunk is. It's so wide that your perspective becomes a little unclear, and it almost looks like it's wrapping around you. And then it does. It does wrap around you. You're inside the tree. It's embracing you. It hums this note of sad satisfaction. And you wake up before the rest of your party with something in your hand. A small piece of amber. With a single worker ant frozen inside. Set in a silver pendant. With a symbol in the bottom of the frame that you can read. <laughs> 